Hello, and thank you for joining. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data solutions and services. Today we're going to get into the topic of data science and advanced analytics. And what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the data science profession and just kind of talk about how we can utilize these techniques in the healthcare industry. When most people look at data science and advanced analytics, you know, there's a series of techniques that they're comfortable and working with. And one of the most well-known techniques is called regression analysis. And this, is, this technique has been around since the late 1800s and early 1900s time frame. And this technique has been tried and true. Uh, most organizations with data science capabilities are utilizing this in some form or another. But now let's talk about how we can build off of this structure and advance the technique in a way that is applicable to the healthcare industry. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to just go over the technique and show you a couple new ways to use uh, regression. So regression analysis in the simplest form is what's called ordinary least squares. And you can think of it as just drawing a line on a graph uh, in between a certain set of data points. And if you create a square from the data point to this line that you've drawn, you create a bunch of tiny squares. And if you take all of these squares together and sum them, uh, the final square that you should come up with should be the smallest square. And this concept is called ordinary least squares, and it's the principle in which regression analysis uh, works. However, when you're thinking about regression, you're not always going to make a perfect prediction. So when you make errors, you have to think about how these errors are being created. And there's really there's two types of errors. There's an error due to bias and an error due to variance. And a really nice way to think about this is to think of an archery target where the center is the bullseye where you're making a perfect prediction. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see examples of bias and variance and how it kind of applies in the real world. But just understand that when you make predictions uh, that there is a trade-off between this bias and variance. So as we had discussed, there is a trade-off between a model's ability to minimize bias and variance. By understanding these two types of error in a particular model, it can help us to diagnose particular results and avoid the mistake of over or underfitting. However, when we look at this, uh, the Gauss-Markov theorem, which is a statistical theorem, basically says that when you create an OLS regression, that you are minimizing the variance. So you are creating a model that has the smallest variance. Well, what this implies, ultimately, is that our OLS estimates have the smallest mean squared error among linear estimators with no bias. But then that begs the question, what if I introduce bias to the model, could I achieve a model that has higher predictive performance? So this idea has basically created an entire new class of predictions. Well, what this implies is that you might be able to get better predictions at the expense of having higher variance. So this idea where you can have stronger predictions is really the foundation of these advanced regression techniques. So if predictive performance is more important than the type of error, you want to use uh, modern regression techniques developed in the late 1990s and early 2000s. And in a big data environment in platform, this becomes especially critical because there are attributes that really uh, lend themselves to the big data environment. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into three different types of them and just kind of showcase a little bit how it works in a real world example. So in our example, what we're going to talk about is we're going to look at a particular data point, which is the log of the prostate specific antigen. So it's the bottom variable in our data set here. And this prostate specific antigen is a marker indicating whether or not you have prostate cancer. So if it's at a certain level or beyond, uh, then we know it's a precursor um, for a cancerous tumor. One important aspect before you get into any type of data science work is you just want to look at the data set. You want to get familiar with it. And we can see here that we have a bunch of variables. They're all numeric, which is good. And then on the right-hand side, we have our variable of interest. And that's what we're going to be predicting. 
as a data scientist or an analyst or a statistician, it is absolutely important that we understand the structure of the data when we're creating and developing our models. So when you look at this data set, we see on the right-hand side this LPSA variable, which we had just explained previously is the indicator of whether or not somebody has prostate cancer. So the higher the number is, the more likely you're going to have prostate cancer. And what we want to do is we want to predict what this value is based off of all of these other variables. So we see we have a wide variety. We have demographic information, the age of somebody, Gleason test scores, uh, weight that has been uh, adjusted to be in a log-friendly format. But we want to take this information and make a prediction of what this LPSA antigen actually is. So first, let's create one of these classical OLS regression models. So I take all of the parameters and I feed it into the model, and I reduce and remove certain variables that aren't statistically significant. And after I do this, I can calculate the performance um, using a measure called mean squared error. And in this case, it's 0.492. But all you really need to know is that we want it as close to zero as possible. So the closer to zero, the better that this model performs. Well, now we're going to dive into ridge regression, lasso, and elastic nets. And before we do this, the first thing we have to do is we have to calibrate it. So we find a tuning parameter. And what we're looking for is the, the lambda, which is the smallest value. And we have it indicated here that it's a 6.5. So we're just going to use that. So then we create these special charts called a ridge trace, and then in this ridge trace, uh, it identifies you know, what these parameter values are, and we can create predictions from it. So in this case, we create our prediction using a ridge regression, and we calculate the, the uh, mean squared error. So a lasso model is like a ridge regression, uh, except for it adds a, a penalty term to it. So it's just a, a more enhanced version of it. So in the R open source platform, we can run this lasso model. And there's a number of diagnostic parameters that we can look at. When we do this, it actually eliminates some models uh, or some variables from our model. So when it eliminates certain variables because they have less predictive performance, it's, it's essentially doing some type of variable selection. So we run our lasso model here. And we find that it has a mean squared error of point. 4725. Now finally, we're going to run an elastic net. And the elastic net is of particular interest in the healthcare because it allows for a correlation of certain variables to be included in the model. So if we're looking at genomic data, for an example, you know, there might be certain markers that we don't want to exclude using the lasso model. So as healthcare analytics advance, we want to ensure that you know, we're using the appropriate method, and elastic nets are particularly well suited for healthcare applications. So finally, we, we run our elastic net, and we calculate a mean squared error of 0.47115. We basically created four different models off this prostate cancer set, and now we just want to compare these models and to see if which one performs better than the other. So finally, we rank based off of the lowest mean squared error, and on the right-hand side, we can see that all three of these advanced regression techniques are performing better than your standard OLS regression analysis. The trade-off in this case is that it violates certain standard statistical assumptions, but if we're looking for predictive accuracy, it's very clear that you can see that these three models outperform uh, the conventional OLS approach. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data services and solutions. We want to be your one-stop big data helpline. If you're interested in our products and services, please feel free to check us out at www.metascale.com or contact us through the telephone number or email address listed below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.